So if we start at the tibial tuberosity, you can see the patella tendon coming off the tibial tuberosity in longitudinal section. You can see the fibular pattern of the tendon all the way up to the apex of the patella. You can see in this case, there is some hypoechoic change within the tendon in keeping with tendinopathy. This is the apex of the patella. On top of the tendon here, we have the prepatellar bursa or the superficial bursa. We also have another bursa that sits in between the tibia uh, and the tendon. Just in here, you see a little bit of fluid there, uh, which is the infrapatellar bursa. Everything underneath the tendon is Hoffer's fat pad. In transverse section, we can see the tendon in cross section, this very wide tendon, and you can see a little bit of hypoechoic change there. We've got Hoffer's fat pad underneath, and we can follow it all the way down onto the tibial tuberosity, making sure that the bone is bright and we're working on the angle of the probe. And you can see here a little bit of fluid in the infrapatella bursa, which would be considered normal. As we follow the tendon up, we can go into the apex of the patella and you can see the bone coming up there. If we go over the top of the patella, we can see the quadriceps tendon. Underneath the quadriceps tendon, you can see the suprapatellar fat pad, and underneath that, you can see the prefemoral fat pad, and in between the two, you can see a small slip of fluid, which is the suprapatellar pouch, where the joint fluid would accumulate. If we go into transverse section, and if we follow the tendon up, there's that small amount of joint fluid. If we follow the tendon up, this is the quadriceps tendon. As we go further up, you can see vastus lateralis laterally, vastus medialis medially, and you've got intermedius underneath. As we keep going up, we see rectus femoris coming out of the quadriceps tendon. And you can see here this sort of figure of eight of rec fem and underneath intermediates.